really intimate relationship with my bicycle. I grew up super obese, hated exercise, hated <laughs> doing anything physical. And then uh, around the time I turned 20, I was in a unhappy relationship and to get away from my relationship, I started riding my bike to work. I lived 10 miles away from work and I started commuting, it was like November or something, it was almost winter and I decided that I wanted to keep going. It would take me two hours to get to work sometimes. It was just the first time in my life I had somewhere to think. My name is Alexandra Houchin. I'm a citizen of the Fond du Lac Nation of the Lake Superior Ojibwe. I live on the reservation in Cloquet, Minnesota. It's like half an hour from the University of Minnesota Duluth campus. I am a senior graduating in the spring this year with a major in American Indian Studies and a minor in chemistry. And I anticipate going to dental school uh, I also race my mountain bike in ultra endurance bike races. The University of Minnesota Duluth is recognizing American Indian history of the land the university is located upon. We'll learn more about it this. It is formal. my privilege and honor um, to be able to share with you guys a reading of the land acknowledgement statement that was written by the tribal people of the region along with the tribes of Minnesota and other tribes too. We collectively acknowledge that the University of Minnesota Duluth is located on the traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of indigenous people. So I grew up like not learning about any of my traditions and it's something that I started to discover on my own. And within discovering those traditions, I found myself and helped learn about my own identity and it helped guide me on my path. I mean, if I didn't know that I came from a native nation and that I had some of these fundamental stories that kind of have guided me to where I am, I don't know that like I would be trying to be a doctor without knowing that like my community needs it. Before I came to the University of Minnesota Duluth, I studied at the University of Arizona in Tucson. And the reason I went to Tucson was because they had a really outstanding American Indian Studies program, which was what I was interested in. And in studying the tribes of the Southwest, I realized that I didn't belong there. So in coming to UMD, I felt like I was coming home. I first went to college for art um, right out of high school. Then I took a couple years off um, and ended up getting a job as a bike delivery girl and then a bike messenger and then a bike mechanic. And I wanted to take my bike mechanic skills to the next yeah, level. So I went to school and got a degree in welding. And while I was in welding school, one of my professors was like, you're really talented at this. You should look into tool and die making. So after welding school, ended up going into the tool and die program to learn how to machine. So use a mill and a lathe. While I was in tool and die school, I thought that, oh, it'd be really cool to make tools for the dental industry, um, like precision tools, because I was really into precision tool making. And then I ended up uh, riding the divide as a bike tour. It's a 2,700 mile bike route that starts in Banff, Alberta, Canada and zigzags down the Continental Divide all the way to Antelope Wells, New Mexico. That was the hardest thing I'd ever done. Um, and the, the young man that I went with had just gotten accepted to dental school. And I thought it was super ironic that I had wanted to make tools for the dental industry. And it was the first time in my life that I, like the dentist or the doctor was humanized. I was just like every day with this average dude who was having just as hard of a time going up these mountains as I was. I was like, oh, man, if this guy is just going to dental school, like why, why would I make tools for the dentist when I could just be the dentist? And then I kind of looked into some of the dental health disparities 
um, of native populations versus like the general public. And I discovered there's a massive need for native dentists in the United States. Yeah. And I kind of think back to growing up, I never saw a doctor or a dentist that looked like me. I didn't know that Indians could be doctors. It's, it's just like, if you don't see it, how can you believe it? A lot of my motivation to continue on the path that I'm going on is to maybe provide that for future generations. Like if they see somebody that looks like them and has a similar history to them, like maybe they can envision doing that for themselves. And then, you know, before we know it, like we have people from within our nation taking care of our citizens. I anticipate coming back to the reservation in Cloquet, Nagachiwanong is what we call it. That's where the water ends. get three quarters of the way up that hill or that mountain and you're like, oh my God, I can see the top. I didn't know that I could do this. And you just like plug and chug until you summit and you feel this sense of accomplishment that's like, huh, I really can do anything that I put my mind to if I just try one pedal stroke at a time.